forgive me. Please forgive me. Again, if there's issues in my home, I want to make sure, even if I feel like I'm not the one that's in the wrong, to say to my wife, please forgive me. I want peace there. What about you? I want harmony there. So why don't you look to the next person and say those words, please forgive me. And then uh, the uh, last, the last three, Sister Yvonne answered the phone. 
And uh, when Mrs. Funches asked, uh, well, Lewis is here, is it okay? I, I want to speak with the parents, since they're not there. Uh, I, I want to know, is it okay uh, for him to spend the night? Uh, and if there's a problem, then let your parents call me when they get home. And Yvonne said, no, you tell Lewis to come home because we're going to prayer meeting tonight. <laughs> and the Lord and I was the only one who knew that I had ran away. <laughs> You know, the Lord take care of babies and I guess fools. I, I probably <laughs> won't. And, 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 but, but if you would have asked my father, did he love me? You know, my father thought that uh, that was a crazy question. Because my father would say, uh, you, you know, I, I'm going out working every day to make sure Lewis has clothes to wear, food to eat, and a shelter over there. You ask that question? Yes, I love my son. But uh, I'm saying I did not feel that that love. It's two different things. I hope you got that. So, well, anyway, that our relationship with our spouse, children, church members, and God would approve that we would share our blessings with others and uh, that we will enter into the joy of the Lord by being doers of his word. Love is probably one of the uh, most important and most what? Confusing. Confusing word in the English language. We say, uh, I love my spouse and children. We say, I love my friends and enemies. We say, I love my friends and, or rather, I love my dog and cat. Uh, I love pizza and cheesecake. You know, the same word in English. But of course, you can see that in Greek, there are four different words when you say love. And the first one is talking about the principle that we know of, which is agape, which is Christ-like unconditional love. The second one is phileo, uh, which is brotherly friendship love. And the third one is eros, sexual erotic love, uh, romantic love without sex, I'm with sex, obviously. And it's okay when you're married with sex, but it's not okay if you're not married. Hello. <laughs> and then uh, stalking which is mutual love shared by parents and children of brothers and sisters. Well, uh, these five love languages uh, that we're going to, that 10 minutes of life, we're going to breeze through. Uh, the first one would be what? Words of affirmation. The second one would be quality time. The third one would be receiving gift. The fourth one would be Acts of service, and the fifth one would be physical touch. And actually, if you want to take a little survey of it, in the back of the book, in the back of the book for the America was here, uh, five love languages here, uh, how to express heartfelt commitment to your mate. It's got 30 questions for the husband, 30 questions for the wife, that you can just uh, take that little survey, and then it, by the way, you answer it. Answer the question, it will show which one of these uh, are your love language based on the answer. And then, of course, the same book, Five Love Languages for Singles, it has the same thing in the back of that book, uh, a different one for the singles, a different one for teenagers, so that if you're interested, you can do that and uh, see which one is your love language. And it's important to do that and to understand that because you can be communicating uh, love in a way. My wife's love language, I'm going to cut to the chase then, we got to out my time, I'm cut to the chase. My wife's love language is acts of service. Now, she feels love when I wash dishes. <laughs> <laughs> she feels love when I bathe on the floor. Uh, uh, you know, she, she um, it's happened to me for a long time, I have to confess, I, I just didn't feel like doing it, to uh, put, up, put up a bed upstairs. And I'm saying to myself as a male, uh, I'm saying, why in the world I need to put a bed up upstairs when we got other rooms that got beds already put up? <laughs> that was my logic. <laughs> but uh, she kept, she kept asking me, put it up, put it up, put it up. And uh, finally, after uh, I'm thinking months, I finally put the bed up. And uh, you talk about somebody who felt loved and so happy, man, she was happy. See, and I'm just wondering what in the world is going on, <laughs> you know. And then um, she knows my love language is physical touch. And you know, that night I really got physical touch, <laughs> and I was happy, <laughs> you know. Uh, 
physical touch is not only uh, sexual, it, but uh, you know, as you you know go through it, you know that it, it, it's non-sexual as well. Uh, but it makes a difference. And what we will find out, uh, what we will find out, that the love language typically, typically for the for the wife is not the same love language for the husband. Right. Typically, they're different. And so, if in fact I'm hugging and, and cuddling my wife and, and kissing her, I'm saying that she should be happy and she should know I love her. But guess what? I'm speaking my love language. Hello? Hello? You understand what I'm saying? Amen. Uh, and then when I'm cleaning up <laughs> and, and taking the house, washing the car, and all that stuff, cutting the grand, you know. Uh, uh, I'm speaking her love language. So she said, aren't you happy? I'm happy because you are happy. <laughs> you know, so I'm doing it because I know it makes you happy, so that makes me happy because we're happy. I hope you get the point as we try to move on here. But I thought I'd hit that right quick so you know what's going on. Well, inside every child is an emotional love tank. This is what uh, Dr. Uh, Ross Campbell, a psychiatrist that specializes in treatment of uh, the teenagers uh, and the uh, children say inside every child is an emotional love tank. It can either be full or it can be empty. And when the love tank, of course, is full, the child is happy, uh, things are going well. Uh, the, actually, when it's full, the child has been fed, the child uh, is not uh, wet, the child is being cuddled and, and hugged, and everything is going real good. But when it's empty, when it's empty, the child has been, the, the, the pamper, the diapers are all messed up. Uh, the child is hungry. Uh, you know, the, the, the child uh, haven't been held for a while and uh, crying and carrying on. So it's the same thing, of course, chapter says here that an adult uh, also has a love tank, an uh, emotional love tank. Uh, of course, um, uh, Dr. Um, uh, well, he's, he called it a love bank. That ain't gonna slip my mind. Uh, he called it a love bank, but then we call it a love tank. And so for the adult, when the love tank is full, then of course the sun is shining. When the love tank is full, then uh, you're happy and things are going along well. You already know, especially our fathers and, and uh, husbands, you already know that um, uh, when things are going well, everything is okay. But now when the love tank is empty, then uh, it's like uh, it, it's dark, uh, it's cloudy, things are not going well, and then you're wondering, why in the world did I marry that person in the first place? <laughs> you're wondering, why in the world do we have all these children? You know, when it's, when it's empty, but that's what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about filling it up, filling it up. On a scale of 1 to 10, on a scale of 1 to 10, uh, you should be able to ask your spouse how full is their love tank. Mm -hmm. And not have them, even your children, how full is your love tank? On a scale with, with 1 being the lowest, with 10 being the highest, how full is it? Well, if it's a 5, guess what? I don't want to say to my wife, but maybe to what do I need to do to make it a 10? I'm not threatened by what you're going to say to me. I want to make it a 10. Are you listening to me? If she say that it's a 4, uh, I'm not going to get upset. Oh, what do you mean? No, I'm not going to get upset. Are you listening to me? You want your, your spouse, you want your children to be able to share with you how full is a love tank. Are you really meeting their emotional needs? That's the question. So, and the way that you get there, of course, is that uh, I think I'm going to kind of wrap it up. I don't listen right here. Uh, this is what the Titus 2, verses 3 and 4 uh, says here. Uh, the aged women, likewise, that they be what? Teach the good things, that they may teach the young women to be what? To be sober, to be serious-minded. Uh, and uh, to do what? 
to love their husband. You mean to tell me that uh, you need to be taught to love your husband? You need to be taught to, men, you need to, be taught to love your wives? You know, we men think that we know everything. <laughs> you know, you know, I don't need another man to tell me how to love my wife. Well, huh, need to be taught because we don't automatically know that fathers, husbands need to be taught. You know, and uh, not only the teaching to love their, their, their husband and the uh, husband love their wife, but even to love their children. Because if we don't understand the right emotional uh, love language that they speak, then we can be loving them in our own way, but not in a way that they recognize that we love them. Does that make sense? Amen. Amen. All right, so that's the whole long and gist of that. So I'm going to just go on through here and get to the end of it so that we can wrap it up now. I'm going to get to the end of it so we can wrap it up. I had a lot of stuff, too much stuff right now. We're going to get to the end of it. Uh, because I see the time. Uh, I'm not uh, in a hurry. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I saw the bullet say 1230, so I want to honor the time. I want to honor the time. Uh, that's uh, quality time that giving Jesus undivided attention. And that just kind of give you a, give you a, okay, I'm trying to get to this. Okay, Dwayne. Is it moving now? And then from the scripture, 1 Corinthians 13, 4, love suffers long. 
sought up alone, that is kind. And Proverbs 15, 1 says, a soft answer turns away wrath. So the, the, even the tone of the voice that we have makes a difference. Uh, and the manner, some souls, rather, and with some souls, the manner of the one delivered message will determine its reception or rejection. We should, uh, cuss, we, sh we should accustom ourselves to speak out. Pleasant tones. Pleasant tones to use correct, correct language and words that are courteous. Sweet, kind yeah. words are as due and gentle shadows to the soul. Yeah. Christ knows how to speak a word in season to him that is weary. Yeah. And I know that we want to be like Christ. Amen. All right. Then Christ out the next one where I lifted that from. And then, of course, again, the continual kind of words, love doesn't keep what? Score. If you talk about you love somebody, you're not keeping scores of the wrong. Love doesn't bring up? Ask it. Love is expressed by? Forgiveness. You are not afraid because you have made a mistake. We all make mistakes. You are my spouse, my children, our church members, our friends, and together we will gossip, we'll go on from here to what? Victory. Victory. And then, of course, humble words. Love makes what? Requests. Requests, not demands. See, you can't force anybody to do anything. You try to force them, you, you lose the love. Love recognizes what? Quality. Quality and partnership. Love wants to know others' desires. desires. Love wants to yeah. build an intimate relationship. So I'm thinking of my, my Savior in the Garden of Gethsemane. He said, Oh, my Father, if this cup may not pass away from me, except I drink it, what? And I will be done. That's the stance that we take. Father, not my will. But that will be done. I want to be the husband, the father that you would have me to be. I want to be the wife, the mother that you would have me to be. I want to be the sibling, the sister, brother that you would have me to be. I want to be the kind of church member here, Amen. Lord, that you would have me to be. Come on. So not my will. That father, will let your will be done. So that Jesus can be lifted up high and holy. And we can just be drawn to him. That's what it's all about. But then, of course, as Christ is on the cross, dying for you and for me. This is what this 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 is for our Father. Forgive them. But they know not what they do. This is how much love he has for you and for me. Forgive them, Father. Forgive them. But they know not what they do. He loves us so much. And then we want to hear his voice say this. Say this. Last, last one up here. Want to hear him say what? Well done. A good and faithful servant. Come ye, blessed are my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. I want to make two quick appeals because, really, as we seek to speak the love language of our spouse, love language of our children, the love language of the members, because we want them to feel love. We want them to feel love. I know I love them, but if they don't feel like I love them, then for them, I don't love them. Does that make sense? The Lord wants this church to move to another level. He has sent you a, a loving pastor and a first lady, and they're here to serve you. God wants you to hold them up, to hold their arms up, so that this church can move where God wanted to move. The two quick appeals I want to make to you. The first one would be to all of you that are here that want to rededicate yourself to the Lord. And you really want to understand your love language and your spouse's love language. That's what you want to know so that you can love them in the way they feel love. And even the church members, I'll just stand so because I want to have a word of prayer with you if that's, you fit in this category. That's the first appeal. The second appeal is to all of you that are here that are not, not members of God's commandment to keep in church because the Lord loves you. And you want to let the Lord know that you love him and you want to become a member of his commandment to keep in church. I need you to come up front so I can have a word of prayer with you. The pastor will make sure that uh, he gets 
the name, whoever you assigned to do that, and uh, the Bible studies that you need. But if you love the Lord like He loves you, and you're going to become a member of His commanded people church, please, just come on up so we can have prayer with you. You're here? Just quickly come. Quickly come. Quickly come. You want to become a member of Christ's commanded people church? Quickly come up front here so I can have a word of prayer with you. Come on, guys. Let me hug your name. <laughs> Praise God. I need that. <laughs> okay. Are you coming too for the same reason? Let me hug your name. Praise God. Amen. All right. Amen. Pastor's going to make sure that whoever he designated, if he doesn't himself out there, uh, to get your names, your addresses, telephone numbers, because it's going to be an assignment to follow up, okay? That's what he's going to do. Pastor, would you just come on up and would you offer a word of prayer, please? Yes. Please. Okay. Let us pray then. Our Father, we, we praise you for giving to us the most awesome demonstration of your love in Jesus Christ. Yes. But also, Father, for affirming us yes. even before you sent your Son, but also through your Son and through your Word that you love us yes. deeply, yes. thoroughly, Oh, Father, we also hear today that you want us to love one another. Yes. Uh, your servant, your servant, uh, Lewis Edwards, has made a call, and two of our dear sisters have come forward. You know their hearts, and you know their response to this appeal. Yes. And we ask that we may come alongside of them to love them, yes. as well as to love them in growing in Jesus, yes. and to walk in Him, in a closer relationship. Yeah, yeah. Also be with those who have stood by their spouse, yeah. by their children, yes. by a loved one, yes. so that we may be, we may honor you, yes. and we may see many more added to your people yes. as we await our Savior, whom we love. Yes. In His name we pray. Amen.